Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is Tom. So today we're going to have just a quick look at a fun, curious little distro that uh, pretty much allows us to run a Android tablet as a Linux device. The project I found uh, initially here on DistroWatch is the uh, Android x86 project here, uh, number 25 on DistroWatch as of right now. And what the system allows you to do is basically run the Android platform on an x86. Of course, Android is typically run on an ARM. And so we can run this on a 32 or a 64-bit uh, processor set. And so if you just go right over to their home page, which I've done right here. The home page here, it's just a project to allow you to port the uh, Android platform over to a... Uh, to an actual computer. The file is fairly small if you go to download it. Well, I mean fairly small compared to many distros. It's only about 700 megabytes. So you can come over here to the download page and you can select which version you would like. And this one here is from September. Is the one that I grabbed. There's a lot of uh, a lot of old ones on here. So I actually just came up and just grabbed the very first one. I assume that was the, the newest, and that does appear to be correct. There is the 32-bit here is the top link. The uh, bottom link here is the 64-bit. So I grabbed the 64-bit. So it's redirecting us over here. And the file size, you can see, is 671 megabytes. And we have our hashtags over here, so you can... Uh, go ahead and do a checksum of your file once you download it. There is a lot of documentation. Now, one of the things that they did say here is that you would have a difficulty installing it in VirtualBox. I went ahead and just installed it in my VirtualBox anyway uh, without messing with anything. And actually, it, it worked. I did encounter one small problem I'll talk about when we get there. Um, that might be uh, due to a number of factors. Uh, so what we're going to do here is let's go ahead and jump into this. So here I have my, um, of course this is my problem, my Kindle um, has crashed kind of repeatedly. Now they don't have the guest editions here. I did not attempt to install them. I'm not even quite sure I would know how. So they might have documentation in their website. Uh, so you can check out their website to see if they actually have that information there. Um, Otherwise, and the uh, it doesn't grab your your mouse quite as well as most of your distros do. So if you're used to running virtual boxes for a long time, or if you're used to running it in in older applications, you know your right control key is usually your um, your uh, guest host interface. And to recapture it the first time, you have to come over here and hit the mouse integration, and then you need to come over here. You can see the white is my actual computer clicker. Click on it and that will integrate it in. So now you'll see that my mouse is kind of locked. Now for fun, I went ahead and actually turned on the touch screen on this laptop. Uh, we are recording this on the old laptop, mostly just because I've had so many other things going on in my office today. Ubuntu's over here, so I've been on AWS. <laughs> the Windows computer still has a website going. I had the Mac computer running half the day, so. You know, I didn't have a whole lot of time for anything there. Um, so um, what I just did is downloaded it over here and we're just recording the video on the old computer. And uh, with that being said, um, I installed the system into the virtual box, got everything working here. Um, I did not attempt any of the guest editions. I'm trying to think, why did I go off on that little tangent? I don't know, it's getting too late. <laughs> Okay, I've been getting up really early in the morning. Um, anyway, just to say that, that the integration is the same. Oh, I was getting onto the touch screen. Um, one of the challenges on the touch screen on this laptop is if I hook up two monitors like I have right now, it messes up where the touch screen orientation is. And uh, also, it, it appears as though the touch screen actually works, and I was wondering if that would work well, but I think it's because of the scaling down, it doesn't seem to grab the touch indication in the right location, which I would actually anticipate as as the real issue. So if I could run guest editions and get this guy up to the full 
width of the, the same screen size that I'm actually running, I bet that the touch screen would work, which was kind of neat to say, ah, oh, I have the Android phone here, but you kind of use it. Now, if you're not aware or you've never tried it, Android has supported things like touch inputs or like a mouse inputs for a while. So if you happen to have a Bluetooth mouse or a Bluetooth keyboard laying around, you can integrate that into your Android and this would behave much the same as the Android does with the mouse. So um, to scroll back and forth between my windows, I'm going to hold the mouse cursor and do this. Now, what it looks like here, and I went into the settings just based upon the uh, the logos here, it does look like an, an older version of Android. And I really don't know. I don't follow Android nearly as much. I can tell you that, where is it? I do have an Android tablet here, which runs KitKat, I believe. Um, and this one here does have the same button resemblance as, as this device and similar icon resemblance, etc. So that kind of leads me to believe that it looked like it was running KitKat. Now, of course, on Android, I'm used to running a Samsung, which is a little bit different. Um, OS build, so I'm not sure any of the differences here. However, I come in here and click on the apps, and this is usually a little bit snappier, probably because I'm recording the video. So if I come into the settings, I can actually see that um, it is. it does say it is Android version 6. So come down here to about tablet. So it does say it's Android version 6.0.1, uh, security patch level September 6th. And so I'm not sure if they're uh, planning a new one, a new release for this or not. But uh, um, anyway, it is uh, it is a fascinating little little device here. Um, you can come into your main applications here and you can get a icon on the desktop by holding the mouse over it, of course, and then you can slide it around to whichever desktop you like to put it on. That's how that works. Um, and I got around, I booted up my phone, I'm looking at things, and it's like, you know, I really don't do a whole lot with apps. This is why, other than checking my email and checking internet, I really don't do a whole ton uh, with this. Now I can tell you this, I've set up enough phones, I've set up enough tablets. The setup, when you first install this into the system, it goes through the same exact screens that you would go through. You set up your Google account. So I have a full, um, a full, uh, um, Google account looked at, locked in here. And I just use the one that's on my, uh, uh, on my phone just for, uh, simplicity sake, not having to create something new. So you can see here I have a, a full play store here. I could, in theory, download anything that I want um, from these. And then to go back to the main home screen, of course, you can hit your home screen. This guy here, let's see, was that it? Uh, gave me the stack of apps. What I'm not seeing is the option to actually close them, which I should have here. Now, um, uh, when I had the touch screen on and I touched the screen somewhere, I got them to show up. But as far as doing that on the actual computer device itself, um, I could not get those to show up. So I, if I wanted to shut down all the apps, I'd probably just have to shut the device down. Again, it does run a lot snappier when I'm not recording video. This would probably be a better video to run on the other computer where I can uh, designate a whole lot more system resources to this. Um, I thought about the one application that I do generally use, and that is Core, which is a remote control for a Kodi system. And of course, my main uh, my main media center in the house is Kodi, so I can come down here and actually run the remote the same way. So here is uh, the remote. Click on this; it loads up all of my music that I happen to have. So I can click in on something and go ahead and play. I'm not sure you're going to be able to hear it when it plays. Um, because the this is actually the media center that is way in the other room, but I have this set up so I can control it from my phones and my my tablets and stuff. But that's the one application I thought. Well, let's what can we use to do a test on this? Well, this works just fine. Let me. Yep. So I can hear the the symphonies playing behind me. I don't think there's any copyright issues to keep the Ninth Symphony playing behind me. 
but I can come over here and, uh, you know, access anything. One thing I really like to, to do with the Cody system, I love watching the TED Talks, top documentary films. So I could boot those up. And then, uh, of course, if I were, I'd use this as an application. If I were working in the other room with this computer, I might use this to control the device um, uh, if I don't have the tablet or the smartphone nearby. Uh, so overall, the system does work. It's a really cool little distro. Um, if you want to uh, do testing on for Android apps, you could probably uh, use this. There is the ample documentation. They tell you how you set everything up so that you can um, you can go ahead and um, uh, sideload apps and all that kind of stuff. Not sure if there's any pictures installed on here by default that nope, looks like there's not but pretty much everything else it's uh you know it, it behaves pretty well um there's all of your account logins and such there's display so if you're familiar with how the uh how the android system works then you can uh go ahead and uh come in here and do anything that you want here's your live wallpapers let's see if there's anything there Oh, there's a black hole. Sure, let's go ahead and set the wallpaper there. Okay, the black hole has stopped. Well, that's good news. The black hole has stopped. Um, okay. So this is one of the little challenges I, I did have. The only other app that I would generally uh, use would be uh, something like the uh, Amazon Kindle and... The Amazon Kindle app also crashes on me. Let's see if this actually sets. Okay, so this one actually sets. So here we have some a live wallpaper. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a try again, just in case. But the Kindle app kept on crashing. In one instance, it actually finally crashed the entire system. So I'm not sure if that's because it's an older version of Android or older version of the Kindle app or... Maybe there's an incompatibility in something, but for some reason the Kindle app on this is not working. Don't know why. Um, all that being said, though, this is a really fun little distro. It's um, more of a curiosity. Now it's just going to keep on bugging me with that thing. More of a curiosity, I think, than anything else. I think this is just one of those instances with Linux where it's like, hey, let's see what Linux can actually do. Um, I'm not sure. What is the real real world application for this other than app testing i could definitely see this as an app tester um of course i have a phone specifically when i was doing some app development i have a phone specifically to do various app testing on uh, but you could use this for app testing you could use it if you wanted to see how some app that you downloaded from the internet might work before you put it on your phone you might want to put it on here on a virtual box to see how it behaves um, of course, I could also run apps inside this on a virtual box behind Wireshark and see if an app is doing anything funky. Uh, that would be another uh, sweet application of this device. Uh, but for I think for your basic user, I'm not sure if it's too big of a, of a useful device. I just don't know. But I also don't use the tablets for a whole lot more than, you know, I use tablets pretty much just to test websites on. Um, I don't use them for a whole lot more. I like the calculator on my big Android tablet. That's handy to, to do budgets on a big screen calculator. And uh, what else do I actually use this thing for? Not much, to be honest with you. I think there was a time that tablets, of course, if you remember when tablets first came out and everyone's like, tablets are going to take over the world. And no, not really. Um, they've never really had the power. They've been too locked in. So... On this device here, I have Canine Mail. I probably have not booted Canine Mail on this thing for probably two years. Um, I do occasionally, if I am really, really need to veg out, I'll take a tablet and I'll browse the internet with it while I'm watching a movie in the other room so I don't have to have a big computer with me. But for the most part, I'm not a big tablet guy. So, I don't know. Let me know. What would be other applications for this? Obviously, we talked about testing security. You can see if an app is doing anything goofy. You could test an app you're developing. You could test an app that you download from the internet that you're, it's questionable source. Other than that, I think this is more of a curiosity than anything else, but it is a really cool, uh, really cool distro. I did want to uh, give a shout out to the people for developing this. 
and bring awareness to it that, hey, it exists. And uh, it's just, just one of those really cool things that you can uh, do with the Linux platform. Of course, I gotta click my control button to get out of there. So, anyway, that's, uh, that's how to run an Android on an x86 platform. Um, I'd like to probably drop this on my other computer, see how well it runs with a lot more resources allocated to it. Um, but other than that, you know, it's a neat concept, uh, neat curiosity, and that uh, allowed me to get out a nice short video. Uh, this is one of my much shorter videos here at Switch to Linux. So this has been Tom, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.